The Cure Chronicles is honored to welcome Michael Fletcher to the show. Michael is a passionate HIV advocate who has dedicated the last 15 years of his career to raising awareness and education about HIV as a peer advocate at the Horizon Program in Maine. Michael's role helps ensure people living with HIV in his rural community receive proper access to HIV treatment to prevent the disease from developing into AIDS. He is also a strong advocate for challenging HIV stigma. Michael. Thank you so much for joining us on the Cure Chronicles today. Thank you for having me. Our our pleasure, obviously. Look, uh, you're involved in the Horizon program. We'll get to that a little bit later, but that's fascinating to me. But I like to know, you know, what's the backstory here? How did you, you know, sort of um, come into this HIV community and then get involved with the Horizon program? You know, what motivated you to do that? And what was your journey sort of into that space? Well, originally, it was uh, started in 1985. My brother was diagnosed with AIDS, and it was really something the family had not heard of. We weren't educated on it at all. Um, There were no medications for him to take. He died less than a year later. Um, Four years after that, my best friend and his partner were diagnosed with uh, HIV. It was a shock. They got sick very fast, which turned into full-blown AIDS. And um, I quit my job and moved in with them to care for them. There were there uh, just wasn't a lot of care available in those days. So they both died within a year, and I kind of left the uh, HIV world. Uh, I moved to South Florida and uh, lived my life. And one day I got really sick. It was just like that. It was almost like overnight. I was a powerhouse at work. I, one night I just was so exhausted. I, I couldn't raise my head off my pillow and it hit me. That's how it hit me. And I was diagnosed with full blown AIDS. And uh, the doctor said I had it for at least 10 years where my numbers were. I wasn't able to even stand on my own at that time. Well, um, so it was sort of the mid eighties where your brother and uh, you know, the other two people that you cared for passed away. Yes. Um, and so 10 years, uh, when was your diagnosis? My diagnosis was in 2002. So actually, while I was taking care of them, I was most likely positive myself. Well, that's almost, that's like more than, that's almost 15 years, it sounds like. Or Is that right? Right. And, and my numbers were so low. And I mean, they're estimating, guesstimating. Um, yeah. But yeah, 10 to 15 years was the... Uh... Yeah, that's amazing because you do hear a lot of different trajectories of HIV. You know, there seems to be either a lot of randomness in there, or maybe there's small genetic differences in people where it progresses more quickly or more slowly. But that's remarkable that you were able to live undiagnosed for 10 to 15 years with HIV. That's kind of miraculous in a way. I thought so. I've not heard that before. Yeah. I would not recommend that for anybody. I would. No, absolutely not. (laughs) Get tested. (laughs) Yeah, get tested. Yeah, we hear that a lot on the Cure Chronicles, uh, you know, know your status and, and get the health care you need because, you know, then you'll be sitting here, you know, uh, having a full life, uh, right. you know, <laughs> as opposed to potentially dying from AIDS, right, which and- you, you watched in the 80s. And, and uh, my understanding is that in the 80s, like you said, there was no cure. So people would show up with the symptoms of AIDS and they'd be gone shortly thereafter. Yes. And, um, and the earliest kind of treatments that were really effective were kind of mid nineties. You already yes. had HIV at that point. You just didn't know it. Right. But by 2002, then all the medications that you needed were, were broadly available. available. Is that right? Yes. Did you know yep. about that already? Like when you I did not. told you I, you have HIV, were you like, mm-hmm. oh, that's it for me? Yep. I knew I was going to be dead in a year. And I thought my uh, provider, because I never went to doctors, I was yeah. never sick a day in my life, you know? Yeah. And uh, I thought she was just being nice, telling me she was going to patch me all up. 
and I would go home and just, I would cry thinking, you know, I'm not going to be here long and I need to just get rid of things. And so I spent my nights uh, sorting things for everybody and uh, did give them away. And a few years later, when I was really feeling good again, I wanted everything back. <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> so I realized I'm not going to die. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. I hope they were understanding about that and happy for yeah. you and glad it's, to give you the stuff back. It's <laughs> a family <laughs> joke. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's so funny. Well, I mean, it's it's the whole story is a tough, challenging story, but that's a quite a happy ending uh, to is. it. That you know, it turned. I wonder how many people went through that same experience as you, because this is the first time I've heard this on the Care Chronicles that, you know, when people got diagnosed, they had no idea of how HIV treatment had progressed from the 80s, right? You know, right. And I, I see people were... today like that. Wow. Still today. As a matter of fact, we had um, a, a patient come in very sick. It's like, uh, they wondered why he was alive <laughs> with all of his counts. But I told him, I said, you're not going to die. I'm telling you, you're not going to die. And yeah. I followed that guy. I called him to just, you know, give him uplifting conversation. And, and he pulled through. And it's been probably eight or nine months now. He's working. He's well. He looks great. And wow. I told them the meds are crazy. <laughs> they will, yeah. they work. They work. You know what they caused, called it in the mid nineties? Uh, the people that have been through the uh, HIV epidemic. I don't know if you've heard this before, but they called it the Lazarus effect. That literally really? people that were covered with Carposi sarcoma, they gave them these new drugs and the sarcomas went away. They came back from the dead. So there was this period of time where it switched from a death sentence to a life sentence of taking antiretrovirals. But that was, you could, you know, they, they could bring you back and you yeah, could absolutely. live a relatively normal life. And now the drugs have gotten even better, right? The side effects are lower, right? You take less pills. They used to, you know, back in the mid nineties, it was probably a handful of pills every day. Now it's one pill, you know, and, and you're, and you know, you, you essentially have probably a similar life expectancy to everybody else. Anybody else. Yeah. Funny that um, that you say that because it just really makes me think back of where I started and where I am mentally today. Mm. It, well, tell it, us about that. I think that's really interesting because you went from you know crying and sorting your stuff to you know doing something really like fulfilling in the Horizon Project. And so it sounds like this is kind of core to your journey here. It's, and I think it's a fascinating aspect of, of your story. It is. And, uh, you know, when I was first diagnosed and started, we got right into care. Nobody could know. I mean, back then, especially, even mm -hmm. more so when my brother was sick, you could be thrown out of your apartment if you were found to have AIDS. So you went from, you know, that situation to, you know, uh, at least it wasn't, you didn't have to hide it quite as much as your brother did, right? You know, like at least your doctor was like, hey, don't worry about it. It's like, we got a treatment for it. Right. But you still, you know, you didn't believe it at first, did you? But yeah. now you're in a totally different situation where you're telling people that they're going to live. So I, and I love that. I yeah. love that so much. You know, I have the best job. I, you know, I can give food, produce, warm socks, gloves, and that we purchased with our four, uh, 340B money. Huh. Um, so it's really, uh, back, to, back to my story that we were talking about. So I gradually came out of my shell, uh, but it was just so important that nobody found out. That's, and that's usually anyone's, you know, I don't want everybody to think I'm dirty or, you know, it's uh, that's what is the mental issue that I had. I just felt so insecure, you know, with my mm -hmm. disease. Um, so I moved to Maine. I think it was uh, 2006. I'm a Floridian. I 
did not understand my partner wanting to move where it snowed <laughs> and you had to shovel. So that was the first thing I said, I don't shovel. <laughs> but I, so I came up here and it's like so rural. I have never lived in such a rural place in my life. And I just happened to be uh, at a function and met this woman, Nancy, and she talked to me. She worked here at the Horizon program. She said she was a peer advocate. Well, I didn't know what that was, but when she explained it, I thought that is perfect for me, you know, um, <laughs> to just, you know, give that, give what I didn't have. I wish I would have had a peer advocate, you know? Yeah. Um, huh. And it has just led to, I mean, me, I was a server in Orlando and since I moved to Maine, I've traveled to Washington several times, Montreal, Miami, as an advocate, as an advocate to conferences where you mm -hmm. can network with other people. And it's mm -hmm. just, I can't believe this is me <laughs> today. Yeah. When I think of where I was sitting in a dark room crying, I think today that, wow. Wow, from hopelessness to sort of inspiration and fulfillment. Yeah, right? and, it absolutely and, is. and you're helping people along that journey to hasten that, right? You're that, you're now that person that they meet in a lot of cases. It sounds like in rural Maine, maybe it's not as widespread the knowledge that you're imparting to me right now, right? Or that, you know, that right. I've learned through the Cure Chronicles, but you're actually helping to spread that uh, in rural Maine. Is that right? There, there are cases up there and, and oh, people that absolutely. are feeling desperate and, and then I'm very really lucky. I, I have known most of our patients uh, for 15 years. So we have a great rapport. Um, we have like dinners that they come to just to get out and not be isolated. And I have so much fun with every one of them. I mean, we, we're just, it's like we're, we're in the same place, a mm -hmm. piece of us, you know, we are all positive. Yeah. It's like a and, band of brothers and sisters, right? Sharing yeah, and it makes a, common a challenge. It yeah. makes a difference when you're you just want to be comfortable, and yeah. we can be comfortable with each other. Well, that's interesting. So the comfort, right? So you're you you've created this great environment for all those folks, right? You're getting together, and you have like community, you have support, you have you know faith in your future, you have you know sort of a a positive attitude, mm -hmm. you know a, another another form of good positive, right? right. You know, that, yes. that's the point is that you can be positive and positive, right? <laughs> because there isn't really the reason to not go forward and live a great life. So you're, you created all that, but you're also sort of alluding to the fact that there still is stigma out there, right? Because you've made like a bubble, you know, where yes. it's like, oh, it's so comfortable. What's outside of that bubble? Like, you know, I, I think I see some of both, but what do you see like in rural Maine and what do you see globally in terms of that? I like how you put that, the bubble. And it, and seriously, it really is. It is just so comfortable. Outside of that stigma, I mean, stigma has gotten better since the early days, because in the early days when you had, well, it was mostly AIDS then, you could tell. I mean, you yeah. knew like, wow, that person's really sick. So you are isolated. You hardly left your house. Um, mm -hmm. You just didn't want people to see you. You didn't want people to know. And that's what you're really thinking about rather than who cares what they know, you know? Mm. This is me. Uh, yeah. That's right. You are here. You're and you on the internet now course. saying, yeah, I'm HIV positive. Have, you know, I got diagnosed in 1992. You're fearless about it. I mean, you really are just like, okay, you don't like it. All right. Don't you know, is, we'll hang out with you then. Yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> because stigma, I avoid it. It's just, yeah. it's unhealthy. It, it's, it is real. Not as bad, but especially in rural places that I live in you know, in Maine, where transportation is our biggest problem, you know, people, people live in very rural areas here. Mm -hmm. um, and that is the reason for our um, newsletter. 
Mm. Uh, our uh, one of our employees, Tammy, she does the newsletter. Uh, we all chip in with articles and stuff, and she puts it all together, and it keeps everybody connected. Mm -hmm. uh, if we're going to have a function, everybody knows about it, uh, yeah. and we somehow get them rides to our but functions. All so that come in come and all we all pull together. And gather. Yeah. Can you pick up so and so? Can you pick up? It's like a little family. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it yeah. is. It actually reminds me of like rural religious, you know, organizations, right? Yes. The ones that are, you know, yeah. that are really about community, right? Because right. it's true. Think about how much you get out of that. I mean, isolation just in general uh, is just not healthy, and it doesn't yeah, it is happiness, enough. right? You know, we need connection, and it sounds like you can. You know, in the early days, you can end up, end up being a self-imposed isolation or living in a self-imposed because you're so scared of the reality, the fear. Of the, mm. right? The fear, and then you sort of came out of that. You know, uh, fortunately, you know, you met a doctor right away who said, "No, it's not your, it's not your brother's AIDS that you've got." <laughs> right now, we have treatments for this that are going to just put you right back to you know, kind of a normal life. What do you got, what do you want to do with the rest of your life? And then you happen to have found something that you really enjoy. It sounds like I mean I just see it the smile on your face when wow. you talk about you know getting together with these folks, helping them, bringing them clothes, food, whatever. I mean that I, I get it. You know, I, I think there's in some ways um, humans who have empathy get ter tremendous reward out of service. Isn't I sleep something? so good at night. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I do for that reason. Right, you know? right. You're not you 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 don't need a Lamborghini to be satisfied, right? No, you don't. You could, but connection and uh, and and meaning to your life, you know, an ability to you know uh, to uh, to to improve other people's lives can actually be, you know, a source of great happiness. And I yes. can just see it on your face, which is remarkable. And, uh, and, and I tell you, boy too. this, this right. place makes you happy. It really does. Really? We, really? we just all have, it's really, if I have to go to work, this is where I want to go to work. You know, mm -hmm. I have as much fun here as I do my other activities outside of work. And yeah. because everybody here feels that way. It's like, huh. we're here to take care of you um, and make you happy. Yeah. Uh, which I take that on <laughs> as yeah. a peer advocate, you know, you have to laugh, you have to find the good. Um, That's interesting. Do you think that people that have been through an HIV diagnosis and feared for their lives, uh, maybe don't take happiness for granted, like the rest of us, right? Do <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Isn't that interesting? It's like, you're enjoying your happiness, like your I happiness am. is making you happy. Like, literally, you know, you come from this dark place and you haven't forgotten that dark place. And, you know, you're still benefiting like that, just the act of gratitude for whatever. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. you said something to me before we started talking about, you know, God didn't give you HIV, but he but he gave you all these, you know, opportunities after that. Right. He did. Yes. And, and <laughs> it led you there, which I think is really fascinating way to look at it. I'm not really religious, but I like that perspective of the idea that you you thank something for the good parts of your life and you end up inventorying them. It's a psychologically beneficial thing, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And so is. whether it was God did it or just faith, the point is, is that there's all these good things in your life that you don't take for granted that started, you know, on this journey from, uh, you know, the feeling like, okay, I got months. My last leg. <laughs> Yeah. Now you're planning your retirement. You, 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 you have to right? like, I, I don't say you're going to retire soon, but the point is, is like, you have to think about it like the rest of us. Now you are like, I'm out of the game. I'm giving away all my stuff. And it, then you're like, Hey, I'm back in the game. Give me back my stuff. First of all. Yes. <laughs> it, um, this is a very happy place. It's a healthy place. I can't imagine retiring. I'm beyond retirement age. <laughs> um, but I'm still, I, I just, I love it here. I do. Yeah. Well, and the people I work with. Yeah, no, I, I totally get it. And I think it boils down to, you know, sort of what we just talked about, the idea of service, right? You know, if you can make a positive contribution in the world, then you, 
in some ways you realize, okay, I'm not just, you know, uh, taking, 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 right. right? Your life starts to have meaning that you're actually sort of like building things. You're benefiting others. You're creating, you know, that's a, a very positive thing. And I think, you know, seeing smiles on people's faces for me, at least, right. Cause I, you know, too. empathy gene, right. When you see a smile on somebody's face, it lifts your day. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes I'll just, you know, if somebody looks grumpy, you know, like they might be mad at me, I'll, I'll, I'll try to smile at them and see if I can get a smile out of them. And it's amazing how often you can, because we, have something we can similar. pass that good feeling, right? <laughs> we have something in common. I do the same yeah. thing. I yeah. love to make a little old lady or man smile in the grocery store, you know, it yeah. just, what goes <laughs> around comes around is, yeah works for the good too you know everybody always kind of use it oh, what goes around comes around but know the goodness too yeah you give it out it does come back yeah that's interesting that's a really interesting point i mean it doesn't sound like it's that related to hiv it's related to everything right and that mm -hmm. is you know we're putting out stuff right we're putting out feelings and the people around us react to those feelings and reflect them back and so we do have the ability to have a great influence on our, you know, immediate environment, just by our attitudes, right? You know, so you mm -hmm. have this stellar attitude, right? And, you know, and so you exude that. And, you know, maybe not everybody's going to turn around and smile at you, but a high, bet you a high percentage do, right? Or they'll think about it. <laughs> they'll think about it. <laughs> <laughs> at least. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the Horizon uh, program, uh, does everybody in Maine already know about it? Is this Horizon program something national that you're involved in? You know, uh, put a little bit more color on that because it sounds like a great organization and I bet you some people would like to know more and know how to get in touch with it. Well, the Horizon program was pretty much under the radar for uh, many years. And uh, we got a new manager, Jillian, Jillian LaPlante. She is a person that has changed this clinic, has brought it to where he, to the best that it can be, even though we want to be better, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, pure advocate, my job, she made sense of it, where I really am a pure advocate now. Yeah. Before I was doing, you know, just things that weren't as important as now. Mm -hmm. She makes sure that I see every single patient every single day. Yeah. And it is just great. We have a uh, massage, we, uh, acupuncture here available to our clients. You uh -huh. know, and as I said, all the food items that we can give. I mean, we really, really take care of our patients. Wow. So your patients... Are they all HIV positive or do you have other? Yeah, this, you have to be HIV positive to come to our clinic. Okay. And so do you also dispense uh, the medications as well? Can you be diagnosed by a doctor there and get on your meds or you come here after you're, you're, you're diagnosing on your meds and then this is a more uh, support and well-being? No, we have, we are uh, a working you're clinic. clinic. We have, we have two yeah. providers, uh, Megan Evans and um, Maya Pinsky, they are great. I mean, they yeah. are so caring. Um, so they see patients every day, you know, and um, order their labs, prescribe. Mm -hmm. um, they are the brains, <laughs> you know, yeah. they well, get the, the first thing going. <laughs> It, everybody needs some medical attention, right? You know, yeah, doctors yes. know how the body works and can diagnose things and their problems, right? <laughs> yeah. The first problem being like get you on the right meds so that you're going to be, you know, have a full life, full, you know, lifespan, and and then you're gonna, you know, um, you're gonna benefit from all of this other attention at the clinic as well in terms of well being. It sounds like so. This is really yeah. holistic medicine for people that are HIV positive. We follow them, you know, it's just not, you're here, you're gone. It's like, yeah. they're part of, and, and they get along. They love it too. You know, they know they have good care. Our patients, I should yeah. say, not they. <laughs> this sounds so good that it's, uh, you know, it sounds like it might attract people into the area, right? Like, 
you find out that horizons exist and this community exists, you might go there, you know, as a place that is simpatico with your needs and your attitudes and, you know, your desire for that type of environment and connection. Mm -hmm. uh, do you see any people that actually move into the area when they hear about your story and other people's stories or, or is it more just sort of uh, coincidental that there's people in that area that need you? I think a little bit of both. Um, when I moved here, I was just moving to Maine to the capital. <laughs> <laughs> the capital. Yeah, of Maine? That's another joke. <laughs> um, and it turned out to be uh, very rural. Um, <laughs> Yeah, but they I say think, if you uh, ride through town and you blink, you might miss it, right? Yeah. Oh, that's big. <laughs> Augusta's a big city. It's just, it's yeah. quiet. Got and it. I've learned to love it. I've always lived in big cities um, mm -hmm. until I moved here. And I've really gotten used to it. I, I yeah. like it. I do. You have more time with people than you do in a city because you're much busier in a city. You know, everybody's running all the time. Yeah, everything's trade-offs in life, right? Yes. It's finding sort of a balance point for you. And you're like, no, I don't need the hustle bustle of the city. I don't need the materialism. I don't need that stuff. You know, this has all the different things I need. And it's at the level of them that is, you know, sort of consistent. It sounds like consistent with mm -hmm. your personality and, and you're enjoying it. Like even the small town feel of what is the biggest <laughs> town in Maine yes. <laughs> turns out to be you know something that is um you know one of the best places I've you. ever lived <laughs> really. It's really funny to me <laughs> yeah, well, hopefully uh, we haven't insulted too many people in New York City I'm just kidding like I love that New might York be right too. for other people right yeah I love it for a weekend <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah that's funny um, yeah that's true I notice sometimes I like to step back and just look around me just to see what's going on. And sometimes I'll be in the waiting room and I just, our new um, PSR, the person that greets schedules, um, Aniela, <laughs> and right away you see people light up when they mm -hmm. walk to her window, you know, mm -hmm. and then it just keeps going from there. Mm -hmm. um, but in my job, we have a, um, a room that we go into to talk where they can talk about anything or ask anything that they want to. So of course, there's plenty of privacy and it's not all laughing all day, you know, it's very sure. serious and, other, and sometimes people really do have issues that we busy ourselves taking care of, you know, housing is just a lot of mm -hmm. homelessness, Mm -hmm. which is heartbreaking. I hate to see anybody homeless. Especially in Maine, you know. That mm, yeah, <laughs> yes. Very yeah. difficult to survive a winter up there, homeless, right? So I guess you you have to connect them with, you know, some sort of shelter, right? Yes. Right. Yep. Well, that's make a good sure thing. Make sure they eat. Yeah, make sure they eat, of course, get other medicines, right? You know, the thing is, oh, is that you know, it's not just antiretrovirals, you know, every human being, you know, occasionally needs medicine, you know, cough syrup for a cold or whatever. That's just Isn't normal. that true? Isn't it true? Yeah. But, so, but you're doing all those little things and, you know, they're getting some opportunity to just talk openly with somebody that understands uh, and cares about what they're going through. The uh, good and the bad, been on, yes. I've been on the roller coaster, right? You know, yep. at the low lows and and now at a really positive place and able to share that with others. Yes. Well, that's um, terrific. Yeah. I'm, I, I think, yeah. I, did you, please, if you have something to add to that, I, I would love to hear. I, I, I'm thinking uh, that's quite a, you know, nice story. And, you know, at, I think that's why every day is just so nice because I mean, how can you, not want to you you help people it makes you feel good is what yeah. i'm trying to say i guess uh that's yeah. why i said i sleep good because you just you know you give everything you can give to make somebody happy and mm -hmm. that'll make you very happy too you know yeah. it does me <laughs> i am pretty known for my smile around here <laughs> yeah. it's kind of plastered on there most of the time but it's because I just, I love being here with the people that I've been around for so many years, you yeah. know, part of the well, family. Having met you, my thought is next time I'm depressed, I'm giving you a call. 
uh, especially if I can get a video <laughs> call with you, that'll probably brighten me right up. Yeah. Like, you know, it's like everybody goes through that, right? Everybody yes. has days and everybody it's really does. nice to meet a positive person who, you know, you don't have to have HIV to have ups and downs in your life, be depressed or Absolutely. homeless for that matter. It's really wonderful what your organization is doing for the HIV community to make sure that they're getting all the attention they need up there. And that you're also, it sounds like you're going out to other places and being an advocate as well, going to conferences in Montreal and DC, you were mentioning. So, you know, you're spreading some of that experience and that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, philosophies and uh, strategies, tactics, successes, whatever yeah. it sounds like. And 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 do people like you trade information when you get out to those conferences? To, to oh, a lot of networking. That's that is the best. That's the most fun of it. You know, it's networking with other peer advocates from around the country. Um, uh, yeah, I just I love that. And you learn. I mean, that's where you really learn the most is at conferences. Well, um, fantastic. I mean, it's a, a, a uplifting story from uh, you know, sort of hopelessness to joy, <laughs> right? You know, <laughs> it's like mm -hmm. uh, that's you, you surprise. It's a story you hear surprisingly often in the HIV diagnosed, uh, yes. you know, community. But I think that you cannot tell that arc enough so that people don't lose hope and also that they understand, you know, that people are living with HIV uh, with very little consequences. You're here after thinking, you know, you can't tell right. anybody my brother would have lost his apartment if he'd mentioned it, right? And you're here, like, you know, on the internet and, uh, you know, we found you. So obviously you've been open about it before. Right. So, so that's a, you know, yeah, that's right. I, and, and, the, and if the whole world could be that way, right. And, and what would they, what's the only thing they need to understand is that you're just like anybody else. Right. And your HIV is not contagious whatsoever because you're controlled on antiretrovirals. So you're no danger to anybody else. No, nope. you, you equals you. Any type of job. And, you know, nobody has to worry about that. And that the more they accept you as just another person, the more they can benefit from that smile. Well, you know, this is the first time, actually, I'm not really all out there. <laughs> this is the first time I've ever done anything like this. I asked permission to um, print a story, an article for our newsletter that was in the Chronicle. I emailed her and I told her a little bit of my story, which I just don't know why. I just felt like it. And I was explaining to her how important it was. And that's how it started. She was like, would you be interested in doing a, I was like, wow, I never did that. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So yeah, I'm not really all out there, but here we go. Wow. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I gotta say we're honored to be at your national coming out party <laughs> Thank uh, <you>. long overdue <laughs> and you know from all the cure chronicles that I have seen um you know for the people that don't accept that hey all right who cares right, right. and and for the for the people that have empathy uh for the people that are even are, sh are sharing that challenge of being diagnosed right this is a really valuable thing uh, to, you know, to connect, you know, as human beings to one another. And I love it. I love the story. I uh, thank you so much for uh, oh, thank doing you. this. Yeah. I'm so happy uh, I got to do this. <laughs> I really am. Oh, well, that's really nice of you. I, 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 uh, I'm glad it was a good experience for you. And um, it was certainly informative for me. You know, I learned some oh, things, good. some additional <laughs> things, and I got a chance to talk about a lot of things that I care about. This whole idea of just human to human connection, empathy, you know, spreading joy, receiving joy, having gratitude for the good things in our life. I mean, I just think that just applies to everybody. And it's amazing. How I do often, too. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> amazing how too. often that whole theme comes up in conversations yep. with people just like you. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.